producing multiple copies of DNA by the enzymatic catalytic reaction is known as DNA amplification. In case of PCR reaction, we know enzyme will be tagged DNA polymerase and also we need other ingredients like PCR reaction buffer, DNTPs and nucleus free water and importantly the template DNA which we want multiple copies of DNA. So this is very complex method and that's why it needs optimization at every level. In my previous video, I shared the some best approaches to achieve excellent PCR amplification results. If you missed it, I'll drop the link in description box. Do check it out. In this video, I'll explain what PCR controls are, their importance and the types that we use in our PCR assays. I hope the present video will add more value to your PCR knowledge. So let's begin. So what are PCR controls? Controls in a PCR reaction work as a quality assurance that leads us to a conclusion of the success or failure of the experiment and also explain which are the possible reactions the reaction include while failing. It certainly sets parameters for a single kind of reaction to repetitive use and hence PCR controls have significant importance in the diagnostic industries. So what are these parameters? Here are they. First, do not compromise the quality and quantity of ingredients. Be careful during reagent preparation. Use optimized amplification and PCR cycling conditions. The quality of tag DNA polymerase should be good. The time of PCR run should be optimized. Use good quality of PCR reaction buffer always. The quality and quantity of template DNA should not be compromised. And last but not least, lab hygiene conditions should be highly maintained. So, diluting these parameters or compromising in these conditions can result in misleading the final outcomes, which may results are no amplification, poor amplification and primer dimer formation. If we get these results, that means we have done something wrong, isn't it? But we do not know if it is a wrong or not because we do not have the reference to compare it. We use one such reference is our DNA ladder in agarose gel electrophoresis. Let me show you in figure. For example, we run PCR product of 300 base pair size. And how can we know this PCR product is the same size that we want in our final product? So we also run DNA ladder for reference and these DNA ladder or marker allows one to investigate the size of each DNA amplicon run on a gel. Imagine a gel without a DNA ladder, we can interpret nothing, right? Those references are our controls in PCR. So what are the different types of PCR controls? PCR commonly has two types of controls, positive and negative control. The positive control can be subdivided into internal control, external control, and standard controls. Positive, negative, and internal control of PCR is used in the reaction to validate the results and let us know if the reaction occurs correctly or not. So the question is, why we should use these controls? Actually, using more controls will give more data for future optimizations. That means it helps us with running the experiments and provides data or results to make a decision on what to do or what not to do next. So coming to first negative control. Negative control tube included tag DNA polymerase, forward and reverse primers, PCR buffer, nucleus free water and PCR enhancers if required. Usually the negative control tube lacks template DNA. This is often known as negative amplification control or no template control. It's one of the simplest and most common PCR controls. These controls usually lack the template DNA, meaning while preparing the reaction, we do not add the template DNA. Instead, we add nucleus free water into PCR mixture tube. The final results will show nothing in the negative control lane. However, it shows that none of the reagents have been contaminated. When adding 
water or nucleus free water instead of the template to the negative control it becomes more aggressive no amplification shows that the nucleus free water used to prepare the reaction is of good quality and pure so point to remember is that if we use a large amount of primers and the template region is very rigid for amplification we may get a primer dimer zone even in the negative control because it lacks templates not primers sometimes spurious primer amplification may be seen but it isn't our target amplification if it shows amplification or any size dna band in a gel that confirms that any reagent or reagents got contaminated in that case it's advisable to use a fresh batch of reagent the use of negative control gives us data regarding whether reagents are contaminated or not whether any foreign dna viral dna or naked dna is accidentally incorporated in the reaction or not whether the nucleus free water is of high quality or not coming to positive controls the pcr positive control is analogous to our negative amplification controls and it gives information that polymerase is working efficiently or not and if all the ingredients are utilized correctly or not no amplification indicates the chances of false positive results and how to set up positive control a parallel reaction tube to our target sample is prepared including tag dna polymerase dntps primers template dna and nucleus free water the internal control though is independent but more valuable than the native or external positive control it is also known as an internal positive amplification control this usually requires a multiplexing reaction to amplify another region along with our target as a result we observe two amplicons that specifically are our target and internal control it checks the quality and accuracy of performance at a specific reaction level and how to set up internal control another set of off target primers are utilized in the reaction along with target specific primers tag dna polymerase dntps reaction buffer and nucleus free water and it gives us an idea if our polymerase is working efficiently or not and if all the ingredients are utilized correctly or not coming to external control a positive or negative sample amplified parallel to the original reaction is known as external control the external control is similar to our external positive control and it helps investigating false positive or false negative results standard control is nothing but the sample of the previous amplicon or any amplicons loaded along with the result sample on a gel it actually can't provide data regarding if the reaction occurred well or not rather it gives an idea about if there is something wrong with the gel preparation or not notwithstanding it's very important to include because sometimes it is just a simple gel preparation error that leads to us tons of repeat experiments cost and frustration now in brief negative control do not have template dna and they provide the information regarding any contamination present in your pcr reagents or not in positive control reaction all the ingredients present and parallel tube put on the reaction and give information regarding the tag dna polymerase activity and also provide reference value for the assay internal control used in multiplexing pcr reaction and its primer added within the same tube of pcr reaction having template primers and they provide or check the sufficiency of template and also validates the activity of tag dna polymerase pcr reagents and pcr controls have significant importance in the pcr reaction though no reaction is carried out without controls it has an unmatched value in the diagnostic industries companies are providing each control in the kit itself i think this information makes you understand the concept of pcr controls 
so this is the end of the video hope you like it thank you for listening for more conceptual videos don't forget to subscribe my channel and give thumbs up share if you like this video stay tuned take care